Murder in 1947 was no different than murder now. It had reporters, headlines, newspapers. On June 20th, 1947, they had a field day with that one. The mystery of the murder was nothing compared to the disappearance of the owner of the house. She was found 6,000 miles away in Paris. Who was she? It's a good question. The newspapers, they called her a Kentucky heiress and a former studio dancer. One headline called her the paramour of racketeers and gangsters. Another newspaper had her as the, uh, the Cinderella of the syndicates. Well, who she really was, uh, nobody ever could answer that, not even me. And the murder went unsolved. And four years later, on March 10th, 1951, she reappeared again. And now she faced the Senator Estes Kefauver Committee to investigate organized crime. Her name was Virginia Hill. And she was 45 minutes late. I might explain that Miss Hill is originally from Kentucky. And in the South, it's the custom for the ladies to keep the gentlemen waiting. Uh, Miss Hill, would you please take the stand? Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? So I hope you God. I do. Oh, and Miss Hill, would you do us the honor of removing your sunglasses? Thank you. You may begin, Mr. Halley. Um, uh, just so you'll know what we're trying to accomplish, um, the committee has had a number of reports concerning your income and your expenditures. And uh, as a natural result of that, and through knowing your various associates and associations, um, the committee is most anxious to know the sources of your income and whether or not you can help this committee with the rest of its investigation. Ms. Hill, you were born in uh, Hawesville, Kentucky, were you not? That's right. Mm -hmm. How much education have you had? To the eighth grade. And um, do you remember uh, the year you left Hawesville, Kentucky? No, I don't remember the year. It was during the Depression. I guess I was about 18 or 19. I see. And... Uh, when you left Kentucky, you went to Chicago. I went to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Well, um, did you uh, become involved with gangsters in Chicago, or did you meet them before? I object to this line of questioning. Well, this is not a trial. I don't care. I, I still object to this line of questioning. Senator, Mr. Halley is seeking to damage the reputation of my client. All right. All right. Now, um, uh, Miss Hill, what business were you in in Kentucky? The business of staying alive, Mr. Halley. Is that because of your uh, association with gangsters? Ah, uh, Senator Kefauver, I must insist that you instruct the chief counsel that this line of questioning is improper. Mr. Netter, I must remind you again, this is not a trial. I'm aware of that, Senator. Then why do you keep interrupting with trial-like procedure? Senator Kefauver, my job is the protection of my client's rights. I appreciate that. But I'll ask you to leave this room if you continue to interrupt us. Are you objecting to me being in the room with my client? We have no objection to your being in the room with your client, as long as we can get on with it. Your client was 45 minutes late, Mr. Netter. I appreciate that, Senator Keefover. My client's only purpose in being here is to cooperate. However, as I informed your agents, my client doesn't see how she can be helpful. And that, Mr. Netter, is precisely... Mm. That's my favorite song. Ain't it grand? You ever hear anything like it? Never, Virginia. Where'd you get it? Hey, Lira, will you give me some breathing space? Huh? Whenever I turn around, you're right there. Now, he likes you, honey. Leave him be. Now, that must have cost you over a whole month's salary. Mm, I bet one of those guys always hanging around you at the five and dime gave it to you. Well, you better not let your pa find that out. But he'd beat you purple if he knew you took something off in a man. What'd you have to do to get it? Come on, come and dance. Come on, come and dance. 
I'll be able to listen to the president himself talking yeah. now. Oh, dance like we saw him dancing last night around downtown. You know how those gents was dancing? Yeah. Real high class with them. Come on, Leroy. You want to dance with me? You've got to dance high class. Okay. That's what you're Where'd you get it? It's mine. Yours? Yeah, I saved up for it. Don't you lie to me. Hey, I'm... Where'd you get that radio? I heard you was in town last night, one of them traveling men. Wasn't Don't you lie to me. <laughs> Don't you hear her? Soon. Well, you, you better get out of here fast. The two of you, he, he'll bust your heads wide open. Leroy, get your stuff. What? Why? Where are we going? We're going to Chicago. Get a move on. Chicago? I was born near Chicago. Grandma, you're going to be all right. How are you getting to Chicago? I'll send you money as soon as I can. Leroy, get the letter. Virginia. Chicago? Virginia, what you got to do to get us to Chicago? Whatever I got to do. In Chicago, you became friendly with Leo Ritchie, is that right? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Miss Hill, do you think you'd like to tell the committee uh, the story of your life insofar as it uh, concerns your financial affairs and um, any contacts you may have had with known gangsters? Oh, I don't think Mr. Ritchie's a gangster. Well, I never intended to say he was. Uh, uh, but, Miss Hill, what do you think Mr. Ritchie is? Well, I'm not sure about his business, but I can just tell you that Leo Ritchie is the first real friend I ever had. Uh, this blonde picture up. You know when your lucky day, your lucky day was on, when boss. I put you on the payroll. Come on. You know, I hit a long shot. Either point, man. A long shot. Ten to one. Five uh, honey. Dollars. Honey. Honey. Yeah, you. You're the only honey. <laughs> You're not going to score. Uh, I have no, just a check. Put it all on yeah. mine. I know my green is green. Get Leo. You a nice filly, huh? I think this one can add. Hey, Leo, better make sure the tab's right. This looks right to me. Hey, come on, boss. We'll miss the double. Take your buddy. I got business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't I see you at the track Saturday or something? I've never even been to a track. Oh, come on. You gotta be kidding. Really, I'm not. But my pa used to go all the time, and he taught me everything about it. Uh-huh. No, to me, it's just kind of like a game, you know? Yeah, well, it's a business to me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's a game if you know the right people. Uh, when's your day off? Tomorrow. They treating you right around here? Oh, yeah, really nice, really. Hey, if somebody don't treat you right, you let me know. I'll bump some heads together. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm a good friend to have. Come on, just try me. Put this 20 tomorrow on baby shoes in the second race to win. You got that? The whole thing? Yeah. Baby shoes. <laughs> 10, 20, 30. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, that's 130. Go ahead from there. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, mister. That's the nicest thing that ever happened. Look at this. We won $180. Oh, Do we still get the tickets or no? We I've never seen so much money in my life. Nice to be a winner. You like being a winner? Hi. Huh? Hello, what's your name? Richie, Leo Richie. Oh, Mr. Huh? Richie, I want to thank you what's so your much. Name? Virginia Hill. This Richie. is Leroy. Hey, how do you do, Leroy? Hi. Uh, Woo! <laughs> Where'd that come from? What's this for? Come on, treat yourself to the movies. I want to take the big winner here out to dinner. Is that okay with you, Virginia? Is that okay with you, Virginia? Oh, sure, you can go to the movies, but I can't go to eat. I gotta go to work. What do you mean you got? You don't have to go to work. No, oh, I ain't that rich. Well, all you'd need is one horse a week, wouldn't you? Hmm? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Ritchie. Well, table for two, Paul. I beg your pardon? Table for two? 
my deepest regrets, Mr. Ritchie, but unfortunately, the young lady is not suitably attired. Uh, oh, I am no, terribly oh, sorry. I'm sure you can overlook it this time, Paul. I, I'm sorry. Not even for you, Mr. Ritchie. Touched your food, Virginia. I'm not hungry. Were you still upset by what that phony French guy said in the restaurant? It wasn't what he said, it was that look in his eye. That you don't belong here look. I know that look. I've seen that look all my life. I just never want to see that look again. class. I want to wear pretty clothes and I want to learn things and I want to walk good and I want people to notice me. I really want people to think I'm special. You are special. I could help you, Virginia. You could? Yeah. How? I have a lot of contacts, and uh, I happen to be a very important man in this town. You are? Mm-hmm. Well, then why would you want to help me? I'm a lonely man, Virginia. Mm. You wouldn't be sorry. You'd have all the finest clothes. You'd have all the money you want. And I'd be good to you, Virginia. Would you take care of Leroy, too? Was he, is he a relative or something? No, he's just Leroy. We adopted each other because we're really all we got. Would you? No, you'd have to promise me that. I promise. Anything you want, Virginia. Anything. Can I have some ice cream? Uh, we've been trying to find Leo Ritchie, Miss Hill, uh, to subpoena him to this hearing. I saw him not too long ago in Chicago. Well, would you care to share his address with us? I I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Mr. Halley. I said, Miss Hill, would you care to share his address with us? We met at the Mermaid Bar near Market Street. No, I, I meant his home address. Oh, I don't know that. Why don't you try him at the Mermaid Bar? Are you suggesting, Miss Hill, that a Senate committee uh, try to reach a witness through the mermaid bar? That's how I found him. Uh, besides Leo Ritchie, uh, what other gangsters do you know? I told you, I don't think Mr. Ritchie is a gangster. Uh, well, what kind of business do you think he's in? Mr. Halley, do I look like a girl who discusses business with men? Um, Miss Hill. How do you explain the fact that you're known to men like um, Joe Adonis, Nick Rubanos, Frank Costello, Lucky Luciano, and many, many others? Mr. Halley, I'm not hard to know. Ooh. I'm out. Yeah. It's too rich for me. Yeah. All right. Let's see him. Two pairs. It's nice. It's nice. But nothing against three lovely little Ninas. I <laughs> <laughs> cleaned me out. Oh, no, it didn't, baby. Yeah. Thank you. Virginia, how'd you like to cut me a little piece of cheesecake? Sure. Anyone else want some? Yeah. Oh, no, no. Best cheesecake in the world, you know. Yeah. Flowing in from New York. 
It's a shame we're not playing strip poker. Hey, just steal the cards, all right, Nick? <laughs> Virginia, like to run a little errand for me? Make yourself an easy grand. One thousand dollars? Yeah. What do I have to do for it? Just deliver that shoebox over there. Really? That's all? That's all. Really? Mm-hmm. It's late, Nick. What's late? Here's the address. You'll be back in half an hour. And here, take a cab, honey. I want half now and half when I get back. <laughs> oh, Virginia, you're running fast. Half now and half later. Here you are. Leroy, Leroy, come on, get up, man. We're going for a taxi. Come on. Three. Three. Don't you worry, I'll be back in a while. Hey, you take care of Leroy. I will. Leroy, get your jacket. Let's go. Nick, I don't like involving Virginia. Love has made you a changed man, Leo. I don't like it. <laughs> Play cards. What are we going to buy next? We're not going to buy nothing. We're going to save it. These people, these people are looking at me. See the way they're looking at me? Like I'm someone special. Virginia, why do we got to save this? Saving money ain't no fun. Don't you worry. We're going to spend it. We just have to wait a little while. See, these cards talk to me. And that's not your card. That's not it. 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 Good. But that is your card. Just <laughs> like in the magic show. Yeah. And Miss Reed, look. You see my cufflinks? They're real gold. Well, where's that present for Granny? Ma! Granny, oh, oh, this is the best present that we have. Oh, not another oh, one, Virginia. Oh, it's too much. Will you get a load of him? How long you been doing that? A long time, baby. Oh, Virginia. And where'd you get the lighter? Nick gave it to me. For what? I ran an errand for him last week. What else you been doing I don't know about? Well, nothing else. Hey, uh, I'm gonna show the car to the Foley kids. Hey, listen, Leroy, I want you back here before Pa gets back, you hear? You like that? Oh, yeah, that's good. Good. It's just too good, Virginia. She sure looks pretty, man. Yeah. Thank you, honey. He sure likes to show off, doesn't he? Well, he's... He's changed a lot. What about me? Think I've changed, too? I spent so, honey. I don't understand. I mean, I just don't understand it. You said you wanted a fur coat. I bought your fur coat. You wanted Leroy's teeth fixed, so I fixed his teeth. You wanted to go back to Kentucky, I sent you back to Kentucky. Is it something I've done? Oh, you've only done nice things for me, Leo. You're the best friend I ever had. Is there someone else? No. No, nope, there's no one else. And I know that you know that I'm not the kind of person that will just walk away because I won't. I'm your friend. And I hope you'll always be my friend. And I won't be taking you for a coat. Leo, you know what it is? It's just time to go.
Anything I can say to change your mind? Not this time, no. Leroy school like that? Are, do you know how long I've worked to get him into that school? And then you have those two idiots walk up to me in the nice street like I'm no... Nice to see you, Virginia. Nick, you have seen too many movies. Sit down and have some cheesecake. What do you want? I want you to do a job for me. Nick, I don't do jobs anymore. I left Leo. I know. It broke his heart. Well, then you know that I'm not doing jobs anymore. It isn't that simple, Virginia. You've made too many midnight deliveries. Oh, come on. I don't know and I don't care what was in those shoe boxes. I'm sure you know it was in the shoes. Well, so what are you saying? I'm just offering you some cheesecake. I'm not hungry. There are complications, Virginia. Your little friend Leroy made some deliveries with you and without you. Well, Leroy doesn't have anything to do with this. Only if I say he doesn't. Are you beginning to get the drift of this conversation, Virginia? No, I'm not. Sit down. Don't look like that, Virginia. You know what horrible, terrible thing I'm going to ask you to do? I'm going to ask you to go live in Hollywood, California, home of the stars, in the Beverly Hills mansion. That's what I'm going to ask you to do. Live like a movie star. On two grand a week. What's the catch? There's no catch. What's the catch? Well, as long as you're out there, I want you to meet everybody, throw a few parties. There's a few people in particular I want you to keep an eye on for me. I won't do that. You'll do it, Virginia. You got no choice. There are no special deals for women. No, there never have been. No hurry, whenever you're ready. Saturday. Your parties are getting very famous, Virginia. Mm, I'll try and show them a good time. Good girl. What else is new? Oh, Aaron Kopeck is uh, transporting something over the border, but no one's sure what it is yet. And his brother's missing. Did you hear about that? Hmm. What's his name? That old friend of yours, that Erwin Postman? Yeah, well, he's coming in town next week, and I have a feeling it's to see and meet with Copet. I don't know, though. I'll let you know, okay? If you run into another business associate of mine, Bugsy Siegel... Oh, listen, he is something out here. He's so famous, but I haven't met him yet. <laughs> yeah, I see the Hollywood newspapers are calling him a sportsman and playboy. Why don't you invite him to one of your parties? I do. I always do, but he never shows up. Then invite him again. I'm really to you know that. How you doing? How are you? I'm glad to see you here. Good. Pretty nice. Not a bad turnout, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, no Bugsy Siegel. I know. How do I look? I look okay? Yeah. Wow, you look great. Uh, you promised me I could meet Bugsy Siegel. I want to meet him, too. He ain't never going to show a busy Virginia. Listen, you just keep your eyes open for a phony-looking countess. I hear wherever she goes, he goes. And don't they teach you not to say ain't in that fancy school of yours? Well, I forget sometimes, madame. You ah, certainly do. Champagne. Ah, 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 ah. Thank you. How Virginia. you doing? Virginia. <laughs>
Virginia. Does she look like a phony looking countess? <laughs> the phoniest. That's him. Come on, let's go over and meet him. No, not yet. Go dance with that nice rally girl. Virginia, she was braced. Go dance with her. Share, I drive to the beach. And when I say I'll join you, that means wherever you're going. My favorite place. When I really have to get away, this is where I come. Why don't you take your shoes off? No. That's for kids. Well, all the good stuff's for kids. That's why it's so rotten to grow up. There are some nice things you get to do when you grow up. Like what? Come on. Where? I want to show you my favorite place. Well, what do you think of it? You kidding me? Huh? You brought me out here just to show me this? I own it. 30 acres. Picked it up for nickels and dimes. Yeah, but it's just the desert. Yeah, it's just the desert. In the middle of the only state where gambling is legal. This is Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm going to build a big hotel and casino right here. It'll knock your eyes out. Really? Yeah. People are going to come from all over the world to see my place loud do Monte Carlo. It costs a lot of money. You rich? Rich man never invests his own money. Well, then where's all the money coming from? Different investors. But I'm the largest stockholder. Is that why you hang out with that phony looking countess? Is she an investor? I have a lot of women investors. Oh. Are you interested? Definitely. How much can I depend on you for? It all depends on how much you need. I need a lot. That's good, Bugsy. Hey. Don't, don't ever call me Bugsy. I'm sorry, I thought that was your name. No, my name is Ben. Do you understand that? Don't ever call me Bugsy. Okay, then.
How long have I known you? Yeah, about nine months. Nine months. Should be the best nine months of my life. It's just the beginning, Virginia. You know what I love about you? How's my hotel coming along, Virginia? Well, I don't think Ben thinks it's your hotel, Nick. I've given Bugsy millions for that place. Three times the original Monty asked for. I want to know where my money's going. I know you do, Nick, but it's a big hotel. I mean, that costs a lot of money. I want to know where my money's going. All of it. Yeah, well, I don't know if I can find that out for you. I know you're an artist, Virginia. And you can't rush art. I'll call you Saturday. How is she? I'm not sure. Back early. I have a problem with some lumber. I have to see someone tomorrow. Who's that on the phone? Nick. Nick. Nick who? Nick who? Nick Rabanos. Nick Rabanos? Where are you going to be talking to Nick Rabanos? I work for him. I have for a long time. Oh, wait, wait a minute, for Nick ben. Robanos? Wait a minute, Ben. I have no choices. You work for Nick Rabanos? You're hurting me, man. You... <laughs> Please don't leave me. If you leave me, I've got nothing. Then you've got nothing! Oh, don't, Ben. Miss Hill, you're known to give expensive parties. Mm. Where does the money come from? Fellas. I beg your pardon? 
fellows. Men. Do you mean to say that uh, uh, men paid for your entertainment? Certainly. Well, um, was one of these fellows um, Bugsy Siegel? I never knew anyone by that name. I only knew a Ben Siegel. Uh, Miss Hill, uh, how do you support yourself? I told you, you know, I know a lot of generous fellows. Mm-hmm. Was um, Bugsy Siegel a generous fellow? You keep forgetting, Mr. Halley. I just told you that I never knew anyone by that name. All right, Ben Siegel. Was um, Ben Siegel a generous fellow? He certainly was. Uh-huh. Very generous. Yes, he gave me a lot of money. And I bet that money on the horses. Uh, do you mean to say that uh, you lived off the money you won on the horses? Yeah, that's right. Well, how much money would you say you'd won in the past few years? Oh, I don't know. I couldn't say that for sure. Oh, but I did pay taxes on what I thought was right. Wake up the neighborhood! The winners are home! I knew he'd win. The horse with the longest tail always wins. Don't you know that? I don't know. And I never set up for the glue factory until you Leroy! shouted at him. Hey, why aren't you asleep? Where have you been? How's Leroy? Where have you been? I want to talk to someone. How's Leroy? What did the doctor say? Huh? 
Come on, honey, what is it? I'm scared. There's nothing to be scared of. Everything is all right. Why don't you try and get some sleep? I'm just scared. There's nothing to be scared of. Everything is all right. You keep saying that, and it's not all right, is it? Is it? Well, take one of these. It'll help you sleep. You've got to learn to relax. <laughs> Don't you understand, Leroy's lying downstairs with a head that's cut open? I mean, he's a mess. The house is torn apart. I don't want it! What if they kill him next time? If anything ever happens to him, because any choice that I've made, I can't live with it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Nothing's going to happen to Leroy. People like Mousy and me, we just kill each other. Leo! Hey, Virginia. Hi. How are you, baby? Oh, How are I'm so you? glad to see you. Why don't you let someone know you're coming? Well, it was a last minute decision. Have yeah. you had lunch? You want a drink or something? No, no, I ate. Thanks. Well, let me look at you. How do I look? Look at you. Well, you're looking good. I'm working on it. You're looking pretty good yourself. Do I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure glad to see you. Yeah, me too. Nice place. Yeah. How's Leroy? It's good. How's his teeth? What's wrong? Honey, we got big trouble. I mean, I shouldn't even be here myself, but I figure somebody's got to warn you. What is it? Nick hasn't heard from you in a long time. I know, I've been really busy. Yeah, I hear you and Bugsy have been very busy, very chummy. Well, I have a lot of chums. I hear he's more than a chum. So what? Now listen to me, Virginia, this is serious. Nick doesn't fool around and Bugsy's in debt for millions of dollars. Well, so we'll pay him back. Sure he will. When? When he gets the money, when the hotel is a success. And what if it isn't? Well, why wouldn't it be? Honey, there's $650,000 missing, unaccounted for. Nick wants to know what Bugsy did with it. What could he do with it? Every cent that he has has gone into the making of that hotel. You know what's going to happen? That hotel is going to open, it's going to be a huge success, and none of this is going to matter. 650000 will always matter. Listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. He's not holding out. Listen, I'd stake my life on it. Honey, that's what I'm afraid of. I didn't expect you until tomorrow. Oh, I know. But I just had to be with you. I knew you'd be out here. Hmm. Look at her. Look at our baby. <sighs> she is pretty, isn't she? Just like her mama. <laughs> What's with you? I'm just worried. Didn't I tell you there's nothing to worry about? It'll make its money back in the first six months. And what if it doesn't? Will you stop worrying? Listen, I'm going to be world famous as the man who invented Las Vegas. And you're going to be the woman who invented the man who invented Las Vegas. Ben, all the money for the hotel. It went into the hotel, didn't it? Of course it did. And what I got Leroy for his birthday. He's been working real hard around here and he hasn't asked for a penny of salary. Won't he look swell behind the wheel? Where'd the money come from? Will you cut it out? Besides, Leroy can't drive us down to Mexico in any old car. Why Mexico? Well, I figured after the hotel opens, we'd take a drive down and... I don't know, who knows? Are you too worried to get married? Yeah, how about it? I 
I love you, Virginia. Very special lady. I do. Will you help me with this button? I don't know how they're going to keep their eyes on the cards. <laughs> Has anyone arrived yet? Just a few locals. But the Prince <sighs> from Hollywood are on their way. Thanks. Listen to this. It's the band from downstairs. Sweetheart! Oh, I love that. Come here. Come over here. I know I shouldn't do this. And I know I should wait, but I can't. I was going to wait till we went to Mexico, but I have to do it tonight. Happy opening night. Oh, Virginia, it's beautiful. Oh, shoot, it's too small. No, we'll get it fixed. Virginia. I'm only proud of two things in my whole life. Building this place. And you loving me. Hmm. You gotta get to the airport. You want me to come? No. We stay here and take care of our baby. And Ben. Good luck. You're my luck. Hmm. Tonight's a big night, huh? That's right. Makes me feel good knowing you're there keeping an eye on Bugsy for me. Uh, listen, Nick, I was gonna call you. Yeah, I know. You've been busy. It's not every day a girl gets married. You go ahead with this wedding before I get my money. And Bugsy and little Leroy are dead. Listen to me, Nick. Operator Leroy Small, 1204. I'll try, Miss Hill, but there's been no answer there all evening. Bernie, have you seen Leroy? No, I haven't, Miss Hill. Morty, have you seen Leroy? No, I haven't. Operator. Operator, 1204, Leroy Small. I'm 
sorry there's still no answer. <sighs> Thank you. What happened? Nobody came. What? Nobody came. Nobody. Mr. Siegel. Mr. Siegel. Mr. Siegel. Uh, excuse me. But all your friends. Nobody. It was all for nothing. Nothing. Mr. Siegel. The man at the LA airport. Mr. Siegel. Excuse me. Mr. Siegel. Mr. Siegel. Mr. Siegel. Mr. Siegel. Mr. Siegel. bit surprised that nobody showed Hello? tonight. Who does he think he's kidding anyway? Mr. Siegel, Mr. Ben Siegel. He can give himself as many fancy names as he wants. He's still Bugsy Siegel and he's a two-bit hood. Hello? Don't tell me, honey. I'm just Hello? working here because I've been paid out of Chicago to keep my eyes open. The two of you are fired. You can't fire us. Get out of here. I'll give you five seconds. Out the front door now. All right, we're going. But not because of anything you said. We're going because this dump is a big flop. A big flop right in the middle of the desert. A big cactus, honey, run by a tramp. Ah! What? Ah! Ah! What? What you see? I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you so good. No! You do what you're doing. It's not enough for firing me. You gotta kill us too. What? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my God! What is she doing to me? Fuck this single! It's killing me! It's killing me! Stop! Help me! What the hell are you doing? Huh? You're hurting me! Who are you? No! You're hurting me! Huh? Who are you? Oh! Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? You're supposed to be a lady. Yeah. You're supposed to be a lady. Oh. Ah. I don't care what she said. Oh. Hey, you know you? Bum. You're a bum. And what are you? You're a bum. You're a bum. girlfriend to bring her and my car broke down. Ben, somebody's been messing with my car. <laughs> Guess I missed everything. You missed nothing. Well, where's Virginia? Oh, my God. I got a fight before. Come on. I need your help. Leroy! Leroy! Call an ambulance, quick. She's taking sleeping pills. Come on, Ben. Gotta eat something. What's wrong with them, anyway? 
want to tell us something. Lousy doctors, I can't stand waiting anymore. Mr. Siegel, I think she's going to make it. You may go in for a moment. Ben, you go ahead. Uh, just tell her. Tell her I love her. Go to Europe. Leave Europe too. Ah, it's time to leave. I just have this feeling I shouldn't go. I don't want to go alone. I'll be there in a week. Two weeks the most. But you promised we could go together. I can. I'm now in a hotel just beginning to catch on. You should have seen how crowded it was last night. I got some people flying in from New York this weekend. Our baby's gonna be successful. Okay, then I'll, I'll wait and I'll go with you. Virginia, with you there, I'll get there fast. If you stay, we'll never go. I right, just wait a minute. Hold it. Is that it? Or do you feel I'll be safer there? What are you talking about? I should have had your brains checked when we were in that hospital. Didn't have your ring fixed. I'll be wearing it when I get off the plane in Paris. They don't you fall for any of those fancy French lovers. You're my only lover. Give it back, Pam. Give what back? The money. Virginia, got you every movie magazine in the place. Give me a hand closing this. Sure. Car out front? Yeah. My two men. You take good care of each other for me. Hey, we will. Call the porter. Okay. Come on, we better go. Give it back, Ben. It's not worth it. Hello, Nick. Delicious cheesecake. You got good cheesecake in the West. How about a drink? I only drink when I close the deal. Then you ought to stay pretty sober around here. I came to make you an offer. What is it? Me and the boys walk off with this place. You walk off with your life. I'm glad you haven't lost your sense of humor, Nick. Who's laughing? I am. I put my blood into this place. 
It says in a racket that you can muscle in on. It's a business. Gambling is legal here. Did you forget? I'm protected by the law. I had an idea. I set up a corporation. I sold stock. You're a stockholder. You want more than your share? Go see my lawyer. You've gone too far. This time you've gone too far. Where's my money? You're looking at it. How's Virginia? Fine. How's your mother? Listen, Nick, I got things to do. Come back when you have a better offer. Bugsy, you should wear a hat in the desert. The sun could kill you. Madame Hill, we have a call from the United States. Hello. Mr. Siegel. Yes. We're trying to complete your call to Paris, France. Great. Hold on, please. Ben, is that you? Virginia. How are you? Ben, I love you. I miss you. What? I'm lonely. I said I love you. I miss you. I can't hear you. I said I love you. How are you? How's Leroy? Great. He's down picking up the passports. What? I can't hear you. We're flying over tomorrow. I can't hear you, Ben. Ben? Operator. I'm sorry. We lost your connection. I'll place the call again and call you back. Thank you. Leroy, is that you? I just spoke to Virginia. Damn. Leroy, I forgot to get the ring fixed. Leroy, what are you doing? Leroy! Bugsy's... Ben Siegel's body was found in your house. I'm sure you've all seen the affidavits proving that my client was residing in France at the time of Ben Siegel's death. Now, it's been a long day for all of us. If you're through with the questions, I'd like to ask that my client be excused. I believe we are finished with our questions. Good afternoon, Miss Hill. Senator, gentlemen. You were great, Virginia. Just great. Yeah. Well, I probably had a lot of memories, so. Okay, you made it home free. 
They won't call you again. What about all those tax questions? Oh, not so good. You owe a lot of back taxes. So can I pay them? With what you spent on that new house for Leroy and his wife, you only have about 15,000 left. So what am I gonna do, so? It's out of our hands, Virginia. I didn't want to tell you this before the hearing. Didn't want to upset you more than necessary. The internal revenue has taken over your house and your property. What do you mean they've taken over my house? There's going to be a public auction of everything. I think it's best if you go back to Europe as soon as possible. Shall I make the arrangements? Not yet. Sold to the lady in the gray coat. Congratulations. You've got yourself a lovely little bonbon dish there, madam. Now, no one is going to be disappointed, and nobody needs to go home empty-handed. We've got thousands of items to be sold here today, priceless treasures. What am I offered for this beautiful hairbrush? Five dollars. You're a fine lady. Eight dollars. You're a fine lady, too. Hey, does it have initials on it? No, I can't say that. But it was the one used by the original Virginia Hill herself. I can guarantee you that. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn my back on you and let you steal the whole thing. <laughs> OK. All right. All right. All right. Figured you might be here today. You always could figure me, couldn't you, I have here. Yeah. Now, next, I have this beautiful Thanks for being so good to all your friends at the hearing. We all, uh, well, I happen to think you were really terrific. Didn't think I couldn't handle a bunch of little southern boys now, did you? Now, soon, soon we're coming to the jewelry and the silverware and the fuzz belonging to the famous Virginia Hill. And everything is for sale. Even the panties. Come on, let's get out of here. I'm gonna buy you some lunch. I have here a small box containing the trinkets and cufflinks belonging to the late Bugsy Siegel. What am I bid? Five dollars. <laughs> the leather alone is worth more than that, lady. Do I have a bid? Come, Come on, don't touch yourself. Do you mean to tell me that none of you is interested in a personal souvenir of the late Bugsy Siegel? A famous gangster and murderer? Seven dollars. Seven fifty. Are they real gold? They never get their hands on the real thing. Are you kidding? Hey, are they real? Well, I can't say that, but I can tell you they are his personal trinkets. Stuff he wore on his person. All right? Pearls before swine we got here. All right, going once. Going twice. So, to the lady for seven dollars and 50 cents, the last of the big spenders. Take it away, lady, you're breaking my heart. Come on, honey, let's get out of here. Look, everybody, a diamond ring. Must have belonged to Bugsy Siegel. And hey, that ain't real diamonds. Now, let me see, I can tell. See, those are real diamonds. It was down here in the bottom, under this flap. Excuse me. Hey, I think How it's do you like that? Diamond ring for seven fifty. Excuse me, I'd like to buy that ring. Hey, I think that's her. Oh. Oh. Miss, I'd like to buy my ring back. It's not for sale. It is. That's Virginia Hill. Virginia Hill. Are you Virginia Hill? Yes, I am. I'd like to buy my ring back, please. Thousand dollars. But it only costs three hundred. That's my price. A thousand dollars. I don't have that much money. One thousand. That's my price. Uh, anybody interested in the ring that uh, Virginia Hill gave the late Bugsy Siegel? <laughs> you please give it to me. It's mine. Hey, how much for the scarf? Get your hands off. Here's your $1,000. Give me the ring. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> 